All right, so here's my finished, sort of finished product. Okay, you can see some really cool detail. You can get up close. Looks pretty amazing. It's got all the high res. The only thing that ruins it is right here. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of dent that up a little bit here in a sec. All right, now the secret to Blender's popularity with me is this is the fact that I can go over here hit A and load the image that I just made in Photoshop as my TGA okay and then I can go back over here and hit N and go into multi texture mode okay this will give me my look like this so it will with it, this is without the normal map so it looks pretty good without the normal map but here's the kicker I can be in texture paint mode now in places where I need OCC I can go to my texture draw go like this here I mounted a texture, so I can just go new. And I'm going to be using this texture at a lower strength. So a little bit darker. Oh, and uh, mix, sorry. And then I can go in here and add some OCC in areas that should have been OCC'd. So that's why I'm saying Blender is the poo, because really uh, Maya doesn't have real-time painting, uh, 3D Studio Max doesn't, and you know ZBrush is all powerful in its, in its worth, but um, when it comes down to it, I'm still hopping around on different programs. So I don't know. I still like those programs. I still use them but I really love the, the whole fact that I'm just in one program. I'm doing all this in one program. I think Blender's a little weaker in the character stuff though because the fact that uh, there's a program called, well, there's a variation of Blender that's going to change that. It's called B Mesh, but it hasn't been fully implemented to work correctly with everything. So until then, um, you'd have to do all your characters in like 3D Studio Max or Maya, only because uh, B Mesh allows you to change the topology on the fly and use NGONs, and um, yeah, you can't do that yet. With B Mesh, you can. There's a variation of the build but still pretty loose in its creation. Doesn't work with any of the contributed add-ons. So you can see that's that's a little bit better right there. And I can just add a little bit more. that strength just a little bit and see what happens. Ugh. Muddy city. Alright, and then I'm just going to go to add and see what happens because I'm going to try to brighten these corners up a little bit. Whoa, that's really bright. So strength way down. A little bit further up. So I'm just kind of going in here and roughening up these corners. 
it makes the texture look like you built the texture for the the actual device rather than just put a unified texture on there which I did all right so I'll probably end up doing this throughout the whole area so just I'll add some of these white spots in here to brighten it up and you can see that how much of a change that really is don't forget when you're on in the Unreal Engine it actually takes that detail and just kills it like you know 50% or something like that so anything bright becomes really dark um, so if you over exaggerate these things it won't hurt it at all gotta be careful of that right there to see what happened like when I so over here I just had to go to mix and switch this out I'll just make a little darker area there cover that up And you can do the finer details with this too, like if you want to darken up some of these, make different holes, uh, it works out pretty good. Not too happy with that, but I can fix that in Photoshop. I think there is a cloning tool, but I don't have use of it right yet. So I'll wait and fix that in Photoshop using the clone stamp tool. All right, I'm going to further darken some of these right in this area. Just where OCC should have been around these pieces of rebar. like that and I can even darken them around this stuff you can definitely tell the difference between the variations that had OCC and the ones that didn't I can also tint inside this program so let's say I tint these a little bit darker variation Again, it's a little bit more accurate in Photoshop sometimes with this stuff because this is running off normals right now. Oh no, wait, no, this is the flat color, that's right. Because I'm in multi texture mode. Just like that. And I'll do that throughout the entire process here. When you turn on the normal map, it'll kind of separate um, the two from the background, like this from the background. Alright, 
awesome. I do like this brown. I'm just going to add a little bit of it in here. And do the add thing again. Straight the way down. I'm just brightening up these edges. Just like that. So if you ever used a dodge tool in Photoshop, this is essentially dodging the edges. Alright, so there we go. Now, how do I save that back? Well, I go over here to my new texture, and I never save over the original, so save image as, and I'll save this as color map 2. And the reason for that is um, I might even go further into detail on Photoshop. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, then I can go over to my texture on a material and now it says color map 2 okay then I can go over here again and hit N and bring it back to GSL and hit N so here it is and you can see those variations of color that I put in here are toned back just about right you can see where the roughed up surface is at see those dodged corners really do help I say this one needs a little bit of that whole fixing up -y thing now I don't think I can yeah I guess I can draw in GSL mode too well hmm. just put some of this burnt stuff going down there I don't like painting in shaded mode too well because, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. Like, I like looking at the raw value, and I know if I have it right there, it'll look 10 times better under um, GSL. So that's why I kind of switch it back right here to go back to multi texture. I know painting in shaded mode is always a bad idea with doing textures, in my opinion. I like painting in the raw form. I know it doesn't look as good right now, but when you do turn it over, it'll look a lot better. Okay, some some darker values in here. Get this separated out a little bit. Because if your textures look muddy in this view, they will look absolutely muddy in GSL. Can't like these, but I'm just tinting them back just a little bit. All right, I don't think I could do much better. I probably could if I spent some more time on it, but other than that, I think you get the concept of 
the detail phase. It's really stacking a lot of textures on top of each other. And then, you know, kind of going in and hand painting a lot of this stuff. So let's go on to the next video.